I've been flying with Microsoft Flight Simulator for two years now, and I have been waiting for something like this the entire time, guys. That's it. That's the newest yoke from Trustmaster. I love my Trustmaster joystick, which is the uh, Trustmaster Warthog, and uh, ever since I started flying with Cessnas and the uh, Boeing Dreamliner that's basically included in your uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, I always wanted something like this. So I've been using this since it came out. I'm going to tell you all about my experiences with it. It's the Trustmaster TCA Yoke Pack Boeing Edition. I also have the uh, trust on it. So I'm going to tell you all about that, the different configurations that I use. And after flying with it for more than 20 hours, how it feels like, what things I really like about it and what I don't. So let's begin guys by first taking a look at what we get in the box. I'm Rotordeal by the way. If you're for the first time on this channel, you might want to click on the red subscribe button so you'll see me on my future video reviews as I've done reviews of all the uh, possible Trustmaster products I could get my hands on. So first of all, we get the uh, yoke over here. It's big and it's actually at the same size of the real yoke you'll see on the Boeing 787 that I love. So you do get the thrust levers on it and I'm gonna tell you all about it in a moment. And you are gonna get a different extension over here to connect that thrust to the table and a bunch of papers. And there's some versatile options for you over here that we will talk about when talking about the truss. So first of all, let's talk about the yoke. That's the biggest thing here. Just take a look at this. That's how a yoke moves. And when you start using this, you really feel like you are flying with a real plane. And while I'm doing this review, I'm also going to show you some of my samples of me actually flying with this in different scenarios while I was testing this out in the last couple of months. I'm also going to put links to my streaming sessions, which sadly are not in English, but if you want to see them anyway, you'll see a lot of my experiences. So first of all, we get a lot of buttons. As you can see, that's the big thing here. After the movement, the smooth movement of the yoke itself, you get a lot of buttons you can define to control everything on your plane. So basically two hat switches over here. One of them is going to be a clickable one that you can see that it has the different positions and the other is a fluid one. So for example, you'll be able to look around with this one and just like click quickly look to a different angle with this one. A ton of buttons. So we get these four buttons in the center of each side. These are two way buttons and another button on the side. But that doesn't end here. We also have triggers. Each side has a trigger on it. If you actually want to play a game, for example, that has guns on it. This is the biggest thing, guys. This is the gear switch. And as you can see, it's also structured as a wheel. So in a real plane, when you have electric problems and you don't have lights, you can still feel what the switch is and understand that this is the gear switch. You also have that here, even though um, I hope you don't get any electrical problems in your house. That's not going to be life risking anyway. Um, this part over here of the yoke is also very, uh, very nice. It's a nice addition. You can actually disconnect that. And on this part, you can put your tablet or phone and use this as a checklist. For example, you also can connect headphones to this yoke via the headphone jack that you get over here. And we are going to talk about connections in a moment. There are two sliders, which I actually use as uh, speed brakes and you can define them as whatever you want via the simulator. And you have a lot of buttons to control the actual yoke via an Xbox, for example. So you do get the Xbox button over here. You get a, but a bunch of buttons that you usually get with the Xbox controller to navigate the system, the Xbox system over here. So this is compatible with the Xbox uh, Series X and Series S, and that's amazing. So let's talk a bit about connections before we move on and talk about the thrust lever. If you look here on the back, you see that we have a lot of connections and I'm actually going to switch my camera. This is huge. This is uh, real size. This is what you get on the Dreamliners. You have the USB type A over here. That's basically where you connect the thrust and the thrust is going to have a type A on the other side of its cable. We will connect it over here, the thrust lever. There's a USB type C over here. That's where you connect the uh, yoke to your computer and that's a switch to differentiate between working with a pc or an xbox that's a tfrp switch 
TFRP is basically where you connect, for example, your pedals, if you have the uh, Thrustmaster pedals, for example. You also see that we get these huge screws, which basically let you connect this to the table really easily, and they work really well. So that's basically the yoke. I had an amazing time with it. I loved it. Now I want to talk about the thrust. And here is actually two things that I would have wanted to uh, be better while using this for a couple of months. First things first, we did start talking about connectivity. So we have the USB plug over here and we have the another TFRP port. So that means if you want to connect um, your pedals to this, you can also do that. You get the option to really change this to your needs. So for example, I set this up with a flap switch and two of these thrust levers, but you can actually take out the flap switch and change it, for example, to a speed brake or uh, something else that you feel like it will be more usable for you. If you have two of these, you can basically create a four engine setup with flaps lever and speed brakes. And that's just amazing. And that is because you have three of these levers which you can define. So I actually want to get another one of these. Here we'll see that we have buttons for, for whatever we would want to configure. Probably autopilot because the biggest thing with this thrust lever is the autopilot switch. This actually got me to throw away my Logitech autopilot panel because I like this a lot more. It takes a lot less space on my desk and it works amazingly well. So let's just take a look at that switch. This switch basically has three different options. You can choose between setting this up as an IAS configurator, which means your speed, heading configurator, and an altitude configurator. So for example, I can set this up to change my heading, and then I use this select toggle over here. So that's a two-way switch, and I click on it to prove my selection. And I am sorry for my English, by the way. I'm doing this in multiple languages, so sorry if I mess up some of my words or sentences, whatever. So that's a three-way switch. I love it. I haven't defined these five buttons, as I think I have too many switches already with this. I only have two complaints about this specific product after using it for a couple of months. First things first, this is amazing. That's the, the reverse thrust levers which you can use on most planes. And by pushing them away, you can engage or disengage reverse thrust. The only thing is, is that on a real plane, this would have been an axis. And here it's not. So you basically just use it as a toggle switch, which is kind of sucks, but I, I got used to it. I don't mind like changing it to reverse thrust and then use a different axis, for example, on the yoke to actually uh, modify my reverse thrust. Second thing is, if you do use the flaps on this switch, for example, you don't feel like this is a flap switch. On a real plane, you will have the clicks between modes or actually the grease of the flaps. Here, you don't have that. So that's a fluid uh, scroll and not an actual flap switch. And also you do have to print out some labels if you wanna, for example, use this uh, as a flap switch. So you do know what current level of flaps you are using. And that obviously changes between plane uh, and another uh, different plane that you use. So I guess that's why they don't have any, any labels on it and you can print out your own. So all in all, I did show you some of my landings and some of my experiences with this set while I've been using it for the last two months. I had an amazing time with it. I was really waiting for Thrustmaster to create a yoke and that's the best yoke I could have imagined that they would make because it feels like a, a real plane when you use this. So currently I am using the Thrustmaster Warthog as my main joystick and I'm using this with anything else. So when I'm fight when I'm flying with fighter jets, I'm using the Thrustmaster Warthog. And when I'm when I'm flying with Cessnas or uh, the Boeing Dreamliner, which to be honest on on uh, Mass Fast 2020, I don't really like as much as I like um, the joystick based uh, Airbus. But that's because it's a full fidelity plane. That's a different story. Anyway, I'm using this with my Cessnas and I'm using the uh, joystick with my fighter jets. I'm gonna put links and more information and updated pricing about this product in the video description down below. Huge recommendations for me um, for this set. Just if you, if you like flying with Cessnas or anything that has a yoke, you will love the way that this feels on your hands. Here on the side, two video recommendations for you to watch if you like this one. I promise you, you will like these two. Another one over here on the bottom and the option to subscribe over here. So I'll see you on my future gadget reviews and I hope I will see you. Thank you very much for watching. I was Rotor Deal. Bye bye.